Well, welcome out there to my show. Always a pleasure to be here and always uh, happy to have you out there watching. We've got some interesting things going on in the city. Uh, I imagine you uh, out there have been keeping tabs on uh, some of these things. We've got the uh, spaghetti ramp so-called being pulled down. Uh, will that be an improvement? Uh, are jobs uh, going to be more available? Will that reduce the crime rate? Uh, is the school system going to get better? Uh, is there a direct correlation between people getting into the city or driving around the city easier and uh, your kids getting uh, educated? These are some of the things uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, Mr. Covo, he's had some problems. Uh, it seems that around election time, all of a sudden, they found out his properties were uh, in bad shape. Uh, they condemned him, kicked everyone out into the cold. Was that right? Uh, around election time, uh, it could have been done in the summer. It's easier sometimes uh, to bear uh, leaving your apartment. Uh, are they being helped? Are these people being helped or are they just being tossed down? We're going to find out. Uh, so, gentlemen, uh, welcome to the program. CJ and Bob, how are things going? Yeah, Pleasure. It's a great time. Great times. Happy so, Thanksgiving, everybody. What about this uh, Colville business? You know, he's got all these uh, apartments, um, apparently, uh, you know, uh, quite a few, actually, bringing in, I would imagine, each month tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, your money, by the way, taxpayer money. And uh, the city said he's got these rat traps. How did he, uh, how did he manage to uh, uh, get people into those properties, have them there for so long, and no one noticed? The Bob? system failed. System failed. The system failed. Where, where were the inspectors? He, they were getting, he was getting paid by a program called Home Base, run by the South Shore Housing. Okay? South Shore Housing runs a couple of programs. And they were supposed to investigate each apartment before it was occupied. And then they were being, the landlord was being directly paid with federal dollars by South Shore Housing through the home base program. So he goes. Uh, so he was collecting the money. So but get these the electronic transfers yeah, and all yeah, of a sudden, yeah, all this pro money. Probably is just like is the housing authority. right does. in. Yeah. But one of the interesting things is did you notice that the most recent inspection after the election, okay? Passed. Passed. No problems. Amazing. I mean, isn't it amazing? There's no need for high-profile publicity, and now Mr. Colville property can pass. I'm not, I'm not saying that this man didn't have a problem. He has a major problem. He owes the city over half a million dollars. Okay, so there's a major problem right there. But isn't it amazing that before the election, we had to have huge evictions, you know, boarding Pictures, up the buildings. Uh, yeah, and, the mayor showed up. Uh, uh, it was know, like a little... Uh, like a little parade, uh, people. Well, have. it's you know, it's 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 publicity. Uh, the, you know, the fact is there were also 13 child endangerment complaints filed, in, a, in a, along with that, which were thrown out of court. Yeah. Uh, this is another thing that's uh, uh, it, uh, things done just for the ju just for the Look, publicity. Generate the news. Generate the news. I mean, our illustrious mayor is supposed to be an attorney. He doesn't realize it didn't didn't meet the threshold of child endangerment. Uh, they get they get thrown out of court. Is it just is it just looking good for the press? You know, I don't I don't condone that type of uh, living environment for anyone. But the, the system has failed. Where were our inspectors? Where you know how did it go this long? How did this guy get half a million dollars in arrears on his taxes? Half a million. Before That's somebody a lot of money. You know, an average homeowner, you, you back, uh, you know, a couple of bills and they give you a phone call. They send you a notice. They want the money. Uh, half a million dollars. Uh, Clerk Magistrate uh, John O'Neill said no probable cause. He uh, dismissed the complaints. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's just amazing at how this happens, though. Um, and as you said, if, I'm, if I don't pay my water bill, you know, I get a shutoff notice. Uh, <laughs> you know, unless unless you're a certain person, hey, unless, you know, uh, I get a reduction. Yeah, yeah, right. Unless you're a certain I person. I know someone had a forty thousand dollar. Is that my correct? Thirty thousand dollar deduction. Yeah. That's right. And they got to negotiate. And they negotiate it. So maybe uh, Mr. Kovu ought to take notice to uh, five hundred thousand. Yeah, maybe he can renegotiate the bill. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's a possibility. Maybe he can renegotiate a half a million dollars down to ten thousand. I don't know. Is that too well, much? Well, <laughs> uh, I guess. Uh, he can expect a higher uh, tax bill, and uh, the rest of the people who own property, residential in the city of Fall River, uh, as I was informed uh, by uh, CJ, that the uh, 
the tax burden somewhat is going to shift from commercial to residential. Looks like our uh, illustrious city council gave us the shaft again. People are dying to get out. <laughs> People want to get out of Fall River, sell a house. Well, you know the old adage, though. We had one of our city councilors said, "Oh, don't worry. It's only ten dollars. It's only two fifty per quarter." But then one of the city councilors who voted for this also changed his vote on the on the water meter fee. So, you know, 250 here, 250 there. Uh, they seem to lose perspective on the fact that we have only 37% of the people in this city who own property. And secondly, that about 20, almost 25% are on the poverty level in this community. The, you know, I just think it, it's always the same refrain. Oh, don't worry, it's not that much, but you know, pennies turn into dollars and dollars turn into hundreds of dollars. Now, what was the uh, vote uh, uh, as far as the council? 5-4. Uh, Five four. Oh, it was a five four vote. Five four. Now uh, this is a lame duck council in a sense. Three of them uh, are going to yeah, be gone. Yeah, and I, and and I think uh, I think most of the lame ducks voted for it. Voted for it. Four. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you're going to go out of office, you might as well go out with a big you know big splash. Well, it's it's you know <laughs> you didn't vote for me, so I'm going to stick you with the taxes. <laughs> let's uh, let's show our true colors that right. we really don't care. And you know, ironically enough, you know, people say we always beat up the mayor, but the mayor was actually opposed to this. Oh, so he was, uh, what might say, on the uh, the He was decided. on the right side for a change. For a change. You know? uh, so we Sean have to give him kudos. Yeah, but he did, but he, earlier in the day. But did he know uh, or uh, have a uh, premonition of the outcome of the vote? Maybe. <laughs> we'll see if he vetoes it. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, but Sean Kadeem was um, on the air earlier in the day yesterday, and he said that the mayor and his office um, were proposing to stay at the same level, which I believe was 1.7, okay? And that was an acceptable level to most businesses from what they had So even from even though the, the, uh, the SAFER grant uh, apparently is not gonna be renewed, which means the city will have to pick up the tab for the firefighters uh, that are currently being paid under the SAFER grant, uh, no new taxes were uh, contemplated? Oh, or, no, or no, needed? he didn't say that. Oh, oh no, he didn't oh, say that. Okay. <laughs> but he also did say that they that uh, the extra $3 million in, in, the, in the surplus was generated mostly by salaries of the firefighters who they didn't hire with the city money this year. So, you know, this is where we get back to this, something we brought up on, on a previous show, that they're gonna, if they start talking about a two and a half override, we're gonna run that tape again. Because this is what's happening. And, and you know, it's, it's very interesting to see because what, what happened here was the mayor and Sean Kadeem were advocating for the 1.7. And then a gentleman comes forward, Rob Mellian, who is the CEO of the, yeah. the Chamber of Commerce, who, whose job is to advocate for business in Fall River. So he's doing his job. But this is a man who doesn't live in Fall River. So he's not looking at the fact that he's hurting Fall River. And he's saying that it won't hurt Fall River because by giving small business a break, it will generate more jobs. Small business doesn't generate a lot of jobs in Fall River. They generate a few here and there. But by changing, by shifting the tax focus, he thinks it's going to generate more jobs. It won't. It will, it will shift how much money the homeowner can spend in those small businesses. Was there any discussion of maybe splitting, um, giving a little, you know, raising uh, a little uh, on the uh, residential and raising a little on business instead of a, a I'm not a sure shift? of the total discussion. We're going to have to look at the entire tape. But the fact, the fact is, Richard, that, that uh, when the city administrator says that most businesses were, f were fine with this because it's a, it's a very minimal uh, reduction. And the fact is that they, I'm, when I have said, to be- When you said city businesses are fine? I have to be, most of them are fine with it. So I'm saying, I'm, I'm kind of skeptical that there are certain businesses that want to save a few extra dollars that this was, this was earmarked for. And the fact is, it's not going to help the city at all. The fact is we have 25% of the people on the poverty level that, you know, burdening people in this city with more taxes only makes them spend less money. And the so, fact is it's going to hurt the economy and small businesses. So big businesses like, uh, what is it, True Med, uh, yeah. they pay a lot in taxes, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Uh, a yeah. little bit off their tax bill, a little percentage off amounts to quite well, a bit Well, yeah, money. I guess when Primacare with all their taxes, Primacare. you know, Primacare is the, it seems to be the sacred, the sacred cow here. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we look at the 
campaign finance reports, we we seem to see that uh, yeah, we see where the money went. You know, we can see that some of the money they save will be will be earmarked for campaign contributions in the next election. So, so what they save, uh, the uh, residential homeowners are going to have to pay. pay. But the thing, the very interesting thing, though, is that. Um, and this is something that uh, the, the homeowner doesn't realize. The 1.7 that our businesses are paying is what New Bedford people are paying, the New Bedford businesses are paying, the Taunton businesses are paying. And that made us competitive with Rhode Island. And that's why people would look here first before looking to Rhode Island. Now that they're Especially lowering... Especially a big business, big employer. Exactly. And now uh, that we're even lowering that below New Bedford and Taunton and the, and the cities surrounding... Fall River, they're going to have to do the same thing to be competitive with us, raising the taxes in those cities. So we've opened the floodgates We're to our businesses floodgate. coming in. We're trying to attract more businesses, and that's not a bad thing. But the problem is, at what point? We have people in Fall River already saying, as soon as I can sell my house, at least break even. I'm getting out of here. And we have a lot of people saying that. And, a, and an increase in taxes is a, an incentive to... Uh, yeah, well, you know, the reality, Richard, as we discussed in a, in a previous program, we're not attracting anybody here. Let's face it. We've got 70 to 80 percent of the children on, on assisted lunch programs. We've got 25 percent of the people living at the poverty level. Any major business that comes in here before they come into any area, they look at the demo, they do a demographic study and look at the ability of, of the people who live there to purchase their goods. And the reality is Fall River doesn't purchase a lot of goods. And the fact is that this is, this is just, it's, it's, an, it's, it's pie in the sky, it's baloney, and it's to take care of a certain few, and you, we've got to call a spade a spade. Because the fact is we can say whatever we want, we're not attracting, we're not attracting Mr. Matuk's businesses because there's nobody in Fall River I know that can afford a $95 towel. Well, that's a good point there. Now, we... Um just got over the um, the election, and um, but uh, right around the corner is the uh, representatives race, and I'm going to pose this question to you because um, I know you're very astute when it comes to these things, and we've got this uh, North End uh, representative who is new, Carol Fiola. She's only been around. I've been here for a little while. She's going to be running again, uh, I imagine, uh, to be uh, reelected. Mr. Kilby didn't do too bad when you, uh, when you think of uh, where he showed up uh, in regards to uh, his race and uh, for the representative's race. Now, do you think that Mr. Kilby might uh, decide to, uh, to run again uh, since he uh, actually uh, didn't all, do all that bad if it was a one-on-one -on -one race? You know, I, I'll be very honest. That seat was planned, prepped for, and basically handed to Carol Fiola. No matter what truths came out, they were all portrayed as lies and they were all put down. Um, Rep Fiola is totally connected to the machine here in the city. She is a pawn, just like the other two um, representatives. And to be very honest, anyone who tries to run for these seats in Fall River should learn from the experience of many of the other people who have tried to run for these seats, including myself. You don't try to run for the seats of the incumbents because the people of Fall River, and you're going to be insulted, so if you don't want to be insulted, block your ears, are too stupid to see the truth. So you think Mr. Kilby would, uh, would behoove Mr. Kilby not to run, Bob? Well, I, I think he's going to consider it since he doesn't have a... He has, no, he, he no, has no position right now. He doesn't have to worry about and, the city and, council. And, and, but uh, also duties. he has to consider the fact that they may do what they did before and throw a whole bunch of people in it to split the vote and get... Mr. But I, I have heard rumors that uh, Mr. Steinoff is contemplating running Another again. Another run? He and didn't Mr. do all that and bad. And Mr. Steinoff did not do all that bad for a man who really uh, is, is kind of a neophyte in his, in his organization, really didn't get an early start. He didn't know he was running against. Now it's a completely different thing. You know, I really hope and that he Mr. Was Kilby runs, runs. I hope that Mr. Steinoff runs because I think that, you know, the only way we are going to affect change is by attempting to make the change. Well, we got that uh, representative's race, and the, um, the other interesting thing is that uh, the, uh, the council will have to sit, uh, well, I don't know if they sit down, but uh, they'll have to, uh, and they're probably already doing it, 
thinking about who they would want to uh, be their president because, um, as you know, uh, the president of the city council is voted on each and every year, even though they hold two-year terms as a councilor. They don't hold two-year terms as the president of the council. So uh, they, they decide uh, amongst themselves who they want as president. Now, there's some speculation. It might be one or two other people who are thinking about it uh, because, well, it's, a, it's obviously um, a, a, a very good position to be in if you think that the mayor is not going to stay around for some reason or other. Uh, any word on that, gentlemen? Well, a couple of years ago, um, when Linda came out first in the numbers, everyone said, you know, we should do away with voting for the president of the city council and whoever got the most votes should become the president whoever got the second most votes should become the vice president um but now that the first the person who got it first they're not talking about doing that anymore so i find it very interesting that the story always changes when the voting numbers change um i have heard that which would mean that kathy ambiverse getting be, the most votes right would be the president uh, of the city council uh now, of course, though, this is, you might say, her first term back on. Back on. Uh, um, and, you know, there's been discussions going around about Kathy running, Kathy not running, and people are talking about she doesn't have the votes, uh, but if she, you know, talks to people enough, she might be able to sway a couple of votes. Um, I, personally, I think what's going to happen here is you are going to have um, a number of votes which are just going to stay locked in with Linda no matter what. Uh, you're going to get the block of votes that are locked in with the mayor. So they're going to do whatever the mayor wants them to do. So whatever the mayor's whim is, that's going to happen. So that's going to be four or five councilors right there. So, you know, you really have to find out who's on the better side of the sixth floor. Well, we have a three new councilors. And, um... Well, and one of those councilors is so connected to the mayor, uh, is, you know, um, it's unbelievable. So he'll get his marching nice. orders, you th you're <laughs> saying, from the mayor? Uh, oh, well, yeah. Let's, let's look at the reality of it. If, if Kathy's one of those three new councilors, she may be a candidate. If she, if she, or it, who knows? We may see Joe Kamara make a run at it again. Yep. Uh, that's another possibility. But, but the reality is, voting-wise, Linda has to have the edge because mm -hmm. the fact is that, that – if the mayor is going to is going to weigh in, which he will, maybe behind the scenes, he won't weigh in, obviously publicly, but he will weigh in. Uh, Joe Camara is not perceived as a friend of the mayor. He voted against the budget, and I might say justifiably so. Of course, Kathy Ann is not considered a, a friend, friend of, of the mayor, mayor <laughs> since she <laughs> ran. She against wants him. to be the mayor, <laughs> so she wanted to be the mayor, and so I, it kind of. Linda leads. Pereira wanted to be the mayor, but uh, she found out that uh, nobody else wanted her to be the mayor. Yeah, and not enough people were out there. Yeah, well, I, and I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure if that little little little. A uh, little voice in the back of her head said, wait one more term. Let's see what happens with the mayor. Let's see what happens uh, down the road. Uh, this may not be the right time. And uh, who knows what's going to happen in her political future. But as far as her being the, the council president, because of the fact that the, the other potential candidates, Joe Camara and Kathy Ann, I think that, uh, unfortunately, well, maybe it's a bad phraseology. <laughs> I don't have anything against Linda, but the fact is I think, you know, it's, it's really a foregone conclusion who's going to be the president of the city council as far as I'm concerned. So, okay, um, we, um, uh, or the city, I should say, had uh, a little uh, swirling moment in regards to uh, the water, uh, the water department. And some comments were made in regards to um, the amount of money it would take to clean up uh, a certain part of the city that uh, allegedly the water department itself had uh, uh, contaminated. Uh, how, how, would, how are we uh, with, that, uh, with that story? Is that a dead story or is that uh, still being dug up, as you might say? Yeah, dug up. Very, very appropriate. <laughs> very, very appropriate use of words. Well, I'm not sure if it's dead. They want it to be dead. Um, I saw, I saw a vehicle last week when I was driving out Bedford, turning up into the water plant. 
uh, a flatbed loaded with plastic barrels, which you normally use to put material in when you're hauling it out. So, I mean, they're still hauling a lot of debris out of there, and what it is, who knows? Uh, it's one of the problems we have in the city of Fall River. Uh, the transparency is missing. Uh, everything is done behind closed doors, and we've had problems now in the school department that are being uh, basically uh, muffled, and they're going to be coming out very shortly. But it seems that everything in this city happens behind the curtain. What, what's happened to, um, I mean, a lot of politicians love this word transparency. Uh, I mean, you know, when that first came out, a lot of people had to run to the dictionary to find out what it meant. What, is, what does transparency mean, really? Depends is that just, a, it's just a, a slogan? And Depends on who says it. Oh. When we say it, we mean that you can see what's going on. When a politician says it, it means it's a opaque glass. You can't see anything, but we tell you what you're going to see. In other words, you might be able to see something. But we'll no, give you the appearance you. of what we want you, you to, to see. see. Exactly. Oh, in other words, it's like a, an illusion? Illusion, yes. You I know, see. transparency to us is seeing what's really happening. To a politician, it's an illusion. It's not like a thirsty like man a crawling on a desert and all of a sudden he sees this oasis. Yeah, and a mirage. And runs there. over and all of a sudden it, there's nothing there. Uh, so in other words, is transparency another word for mirage? Well, to, to politicians, I believe it is, because we seem to get this, this, this political speak that says, we're going to do this and we're doing this, and they, they go before the council and they, they, they make these, they, they, they profess these things, and then we find out later that we've got half a story, a third of the story, and any similarity between a story, in fact, is purely coincidental. Uh, this happens on a regular basis now. Uh, we didn't hear about anything in the water treatment plan until it was brought to light. We don't hear about a lot of things, and then when we do hear about them, we don't get the full story. And when we tell them, we're called liars. And then when they come out and they're told about them, they, they say, we never heard it. <laughs> <You're so>. That's right. <laughs> which, which is the best part of our job? Well, we've got um, today it was, uh, oh, yesterday, last night, a lot of rain. Uh, today, a lot of rain. Uh, the city of Fall River is actually built on hills. But imagine, it, it, it floods. That, that's the curious part about it. So we must have these little gullies and these little, uh, little bowls uh, where water uh, doesn't uh, drain off as quickly. And, and I guess the, the question I have is, with all the, uh, we have a lot of uh, you know, development in a sense. We keep building these foundations, and these foundations are waterproof. Uh, which means that the, the water is not going to be able to uh, permeate uh, in, in that part of, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the construction of the house. So it has to uh, sort of channel itself off. Is this going to be a, a constant uh, problem, uh, the building, uh, the uh, putting in driveways? Uh, the, the city seems to want to be, uh, spend a lot of money to alleviate, even alleviate flooding, but is this uh, is a problem that uh, is being mismanaged or not? Uh, hey, the voters just approved $10 million to study it. Just to study it. <laughs> and not, by the way, study one of the worst places in Fall River, which is Stafford Square. Right. I mean, if you go to Stafford Square with any amount of rain, it, it, it looks like the Lafayette pool. It's a, it's a bowl area. Yeah, <laughs> and it's always, it's virtually impassable if we have any It seems like most of, of those roads that, that go into Stafford Road have an incline upwards. In other words, they, they're, they're sloping down into Globe that. Globe Five Corners today looked like heck. Mm -hmm. I mean, the water was coming out of the, uh, manhole, the, 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 manhole yeah, cover? the sewer covers, you know, the, the manhole covers. Rodman Street, the water was coming out through the, the manhole covers. But we're studying this, and it's costing us $10 million to study it. No. So when they come back in another year or maybe, you know, shorter and ask for 20 million or 30 million or 40 million to fix the problem, remember, you voted for 10 million to just study it. Do you think the city, um, and I've raised this question before uh, to you gentlemen, should uh, request or impose a fee on new development? So that someone's going to build a house, uh, someone's going to build a uh, you know, warehouse or a building, commercial building, that they should be assessed a percentage of the value of, of the uh, property. So if the house is, uh, 
Uh, if they go for a building permit, they tell the building inspector that, that they expect this to be a $240,000 project, that a 1% or 2% should be assessed, and that money put into the water department to alleviate, alleviate flooding because they actually are causing additional flooding? Right. We call it an impact fee. Well, you know, the only problem I have with that is that it, it's the it's we're giving money to people who have a proven track record of not being able to do the job True. when we give it to the water department. The problem we have now is that, you know, we're, we're putting in good money after bad all the time, and it's a great idea, but it's just like the fact that they can build a casino in Las Vegas as big as a, as big as a city in a year and have everything perfect, but look what happens whenever the government does a project. It's going to take us seven years to do something on the bridge. It takes, look at the big dig, look at anything they do in government. It's a, it's a total disaster. And when you begin to give government more money to play with, without oversight, it begins to scare me. And, and, and the reality is when people are coming in and they want to build a building, most of the time if it's a commercial building or, or even a residential building, you want your house built right. You don't want your house to, but if it's going to divert water, that's up to the city. And if that's the issue, I think there should be some kind of abatement. Now, uh, we've got the, uh, the ramps are coming down at, uh, over there. Uh, the Anawan Street, that, that ramp that uh, goes uh, into, uh, uh, into Broadway, uh, they've been actually just chewing away with the, <laughs> this big claw. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty much all gone. And I guess they'll just continue, of course, uh, taking these ramps down. Um, good for the city? Uh, neutral? Uh, Irrelevant. 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 You know what it's going to be? It's going uh, to make easier and quicker access to the, to the arteries to go to Newport and the Cape. That's all it's going to, you know, anybody who believes that that's going to help the city of Fall River with what we have to offer is crazy. Uh, the um, waterfront, you think it's going to do much for the waterfront? How long have we been talking about the waterfront? Well, how long? <laughs> Richard, but, but, what are they going to stop at the waterfront for? We've had the, how long has the battleship been down there? We had the, the carousel was People a failure. People still going to go over the, the bridge bounty, and keep going? The bounty was a failure. The fact is that you know, let's face it, we're 15 minutes away from one of the biggest tourist attractions in the world, Newport, Rhode Island, especially in the summer, with, with, the, with yacht races and, and the Great Gatsby and the 12-mile drive. You see, you, somebody's going to get off Fall River, uh, you get off at Fall River to stop where? To get a hamburger at Jerry Remy's? They may not be Red Sox fans. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, you, you've got to be realistic about it. We have nothing to offer. And the one thing they want to start offering again now, they're talking about, oh, let's start talking about the murderous. Let's talk about Lizzie Borden. You know, we've beaten that dead horse enough, too. Come on, let's, if we're going to do it, we've got to do it right What is Fall River? Any big convention center? Something that... Uh... How? We have no place. We have no hotels. We have one hotel in the city. It's all the way up at the old airport, and there's nothing around it, okay? There's BK Tavern and their food sucks, all right? They, they, people have gone in there. They leave. They don't like their food. So why bother? Okay, gentlemen, I think we'll end it on that note. <laughs> we just had a, a restaurant. From the Phantom Gourmet. The Phantom Gourmet just cre created. Restaurant review. By the restaurant review of the show. By CJ <laughs> Well, The opinions expressed here are those of me. <laughs> what you like and don't like uh, is uh, I know, your I, opinion. No, no, no filters. Okay. <laughs> All right, any, uh, any, any prediction? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving. Of Happy yeah. Thanksgiving to everybody. And, and my prediction is more of the same. More. Yeah. And I think on <laughs> December 9th, people should get to the Henry Lord Middle School and fight for our kids. Okay. Uh, thank you, CJ. Uh, Bob, uh, always a pleasure to have you on the show. I hope you out there enjoy it. I always do. <laughs> we have our light moments also. And don't take everything seriously. Uh, this is uh, to just bring out what goes on in the, uh, the city of Florida. So thank you out there for watching.